everybody. Today is all about detox. So there are so many pollutants and heavy metals and things in our environment. And today we are going to talk with Sheila Keneally, who is a naturopath and nutritionist. And we are going to get to the bottom of how do we detox? What does it mean? How do we do it? And what are the results? So I'm going to let you guys start coming on. Hi, everybody. We have a great guest today from Holistic Health by Sheila. So I'm gonna just let you guys start coming on. We've got a great giveaway today as well. So I'm giving away these two different teas. This is a detox, um, like a tea tox, actually, a 30-day tea tox. So this is by Timi. This is Timi Colon Cleanse and a Timi Skinny Tea. I hate the name of this, but these two work as a detox. So this is the giveaway for today. What you need to do first in order to be a part of the giveaway is to hit that little send button down there in the corner. Hi, hit that little send. Yes, this video is gonna be saved. Okay, you guys, my Saturday videos are always saved to my main feed and my Sunday videos, which are my microneedling tutorials, I'm gonna do Sunday at 11, those videos are then saved to my subscribers only. So you'll see like there's a little place to hit subscription if you wanna be a part of the Instagram club, my Live Young Instagram club. Um, so that, that's where you get all of the microneedling demos and you get um, exclusive content, you get all of your questions answered. So I'm gonna let you guys start coming on. And what I can do, let me see if I can get uh, Sheila on the here right now. So let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a, a naturopath, a nutritionist. She holds a unique talent in finding the true root cause of symptoms for her clients. So she's a health coach like me, but specializing in detoxification. And you guys, if you think that detoxification is not connected with your skin, give up alcohol for about three months and tell me your skin doesn't look better. It's all interconnected. So let me see if I can get her on right now. Um, holistic. I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to do the um, giveaway. I'm gonna announce the winner of the eye patches on tomorrow's live. Asking her on right now. Remember today's giveaway. This is a really good system. I love this system. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Hello. Hello, Hi. I'm gonna I'm gonna move me up just a tiny bit. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. We are Thank talking you so all things detox today. Okay. Which it's happens on. to be your specialty. Can you turn your volume up a tiny bit? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I might just bring the phone a little bit closer. And I'm yeah. in the middle of a big storm, so um, excuse me for the thunder and the lightning in the background. <laughs> No worries. Sheila is joining us from Paris, you guys. So I found her on Instagram and I loved what she was doing. And I loved that the root cause of things, instead of just masking it with medication, finding the root cause of stuff is so important. And so Sheila, can you tell us how is being, you know, toxing our, our liver? How is that affecting our health? Oh my gosh. Well, that, that's a very big question. Oh, but, um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a really huge question. But yes, I mean, we're basically swimming in a toxic soup in this modern world. And no one is immune from the toxicity that we live in on a daily basis in the air, in the food, in the water, in the plastics, in our teeth, in yeah. everything. You're not immune from it. So actively detoxing to have an amelioration of symptoms in skin, like you said, um, is it's a good plan because we're exposed to toxins on a daily basis and it's impacting every level of our health. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Like, so, so even things like weight gain yeah, could be absolutely. attributed to, to toxins, brain fog, lack of sleep, yeah. um, skin irritations, eczema. There's a lot of things that have to do with toxicity in our body and you would be shocked on on how symptoms disappear when you address the root cause which is our our over toxified beings you know from this Precisely. crazy environment Precisely. Oh. yeah i mean because we can take a lot of supplements to deal with those things you could take medicine you could take supplements but getting to the actual root cause of those symptoms you just said but also hypothyroidism autoimmunity hormonal imbalance, digestive issues, like chronic fatigue, chronic illness, like toxicity is often 
a causative factor and it's a root causative factor, you know? So you're really, yeah, really getting to the root cause, which is what I'm passionate about with my clients. I'm a bit of a detective and I never stop until I get right to the epicenter of things. Honestly, I, I love that. I love that because our modern medicine is not doing that. It's just putting band-aids, metaphorical band-aids on symptoms when you're not really addressing the problem. So, so tell me what's, so, so give us like the, the rundown of like, what are the main causes of where are we getting all of these toxins from? And, and then what the hell do we do with them once we know we got them? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. So this is the heavy list, the heavy hitters. So glyphosate from non-organic food. If you're buying fruits and vegetables that are non-organic, it's glyphosate. It accumulates in your liver. Unfiltered water is going to smash you with fluoride, petrochemicals, antibiotics. Yeah. Okay. BPAs, plastics. Yes. If you're drinking from a plastic water bottle or more recently, we know now, even if we touch receipts, there's BPA, bisphenol A, um, a very toxic compound that we actually come in contact with just from touching receipts. That's I'm never though. asking for a receipt again. Yes, just say no. <laughs> So and I'm an analog person. I'm like an analog person. I like to, I like to like be able to hold things. Yeah. And like so, so yes. receipts. Skin exposure, but this is it, Darnell. It's like anything that goes on our skin, our liver has to detoxify. You know, so being conscious of everything we're putting on our skin. So that brings in beauty products, um, cleaning products. There's flame retardants. There's a lot on non-organic clothing. Okay, so there's obviously like chemicals in the food supply and in the water supply. Yes, we know glyphosate. Yes, all right. I want to just I want to stop yes. you right there for just a second because we haven't done a live yet on eating organic. Mm. But you guys, I just want to just touch on this for a second because I am a holistic nutritionist as well. Um, there are so many chemicals in non-organic foods that there are some fruits and vegetables that if I cannot find them organically in an organic grown in an organic way. I will not eat them. Yeah. I would rather not have a blueberry if it's if it is if it's com commercially farmed because there are so many pesticides and herbicides and mold, you know, things to, to help with mold that there are some foods, foods can be medicine, but there are some foods that are so heavy with toxins that they're poison. And and yeah. so the EWG does have a list if you go to the environmentalworkinggroup.org. They have a list of like the clean 15 foods that you can eat regardless if you find them orga organic or not, but they have a dirty dozen where those are the 12 foods you absolutely do not want to eat if you cannot find it organically grown. Okay, yeah. take it away. Absolutely. <laughs> the dirty dozen list. I was thinking the same thing. We need to post that. Just don't eat those 12 vegetables non-organic. So yes. yeah, I mean, so it's the toxin exposure is everywhere. Yes. And so we're growing more and more conscious of that. But what's interesting, Darnell, is we can accumulate certain vitamins in a toxic way as well. Our liver stocks vitamin A, copper, and iron in over a very small threshold, they become toxic for our body. And I work a lot with clients on that. Yes, to really look at how much vitamin A they're taking into their diet, how much copper, how much iron. So it's giving you a little bit of a preview for the organ that's responsible for detoxifying us, which is the liver. But essentially, yeah, it's, it's really buying organic food, drinking filtered water, being conscious of heavy metals. What are you cooking your food in? Is it aluminum? Is it Teflon? Well, you're absorbing BPAs or you're absorbing a heavy metal that's correlated with dementia and Alzheimer's. There's research, exactly. you know, supporting this. So being conscious of what's going in your mouth and what is going on your skin, your liver has to detox all of it yeah so everything from from what we breathe in to mm. our skin to like all of it you know this all goes and gets filtered through the liver and then we have ways of of ridding ourselves so how are yeah. we so now what do we do we know we're yeah. full of toxins what the hell are we yeah. supposed to do about it yeah because i think we also have to accept that there's things we can control and there's things we can't control yes so not yeah. to get you know we control what we can control based on that list so what can we actually do about it yes well we can minimize exposure you know to non-organic food filter our water filter our water supply be conscious of what we're touching and what we're putting on our skin but we also have a really intelligent detoxification system built into our body created by the maker in whatever form you want to realize him or her, but we have a detoxification system. Yes, our liver is designed to detoxify all of these compounds. 
it's our liver. It's also your kidneys and your skin. I want to point that out. But if you're pushing too much through your kidneys or your skin, you're going to get acne, eczema, psoriasis. You're going to get issues because they're less equipped to detoxify this toxic soup that we're swimming in right now. Yeah. So and I've, I've, this, I've always yeah. thought like, you know, the skin's our largest organ. Mm -hmm. um, and we do detoxify by sweating out, infrared, yeah. all of that yeah, stuff. We can it. utilize our skin for that. Mm -hmm. But whatever is going in inside of our skin, you know, our mm -hmm. skins are outward facing, it yeah. shows up in our skin. So yeah. if we have heavy metals in our system, if we've got Teflon and all of this other stuff, we're eating non-organic foods. Um, if, you're, if your body it has a very high toxic load, it, it definitely shows up for, in your skin. And if, if you guys don't believe that, try taking three months off of alcohol. Look mm. at your skin. It shows in your yeah. skin. Not only shows in your weight loss because inflammation with mm. toxicity, right? Yeah. Um, and it out. alcohol is, is basically a poison. So when you, I mean, it's a controlled poison and sometimes yeah. it, it, it it's tastes good. It's a socially accepted poison. It's an accept <laughs> Certainly here in France. <laughs> Yes. So when you do, if you, if you want to see the connection that your yeah. inner health and your toxic load has on this one outward facing organ, see what your skin looks like when you give up alcohol for three months, because mm -hmm. it's a drastic improvement. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, no, skin, skin is the third, it's the third base, you know, the liver is the first, then we're going to go to the kidneys, which is is less man it can it can manage less toxins and then lastly it'll be the skin and it's going to show up in yeah it's acne psoriasis eczema all of these ways so ideally we were given this incredible detoxification system that begins at the liver okay and there's a liquid in our well it gets concentrated in our gallbladder but it's called bile yeah okay and it's yeah. extremely toxic it is the most toxic substance in the body it excretes old hormones pesticides metals Whatever your toxic soup is, it's getting excreted via bile. So from the liver, it goes to the small intestine, and then it goes to the large intestine and out of your body via poop. So this is basically I get, a I channel. I guess you guys didn't think we'd be talking about poop, right? <laughs> it's never too long into the conversation before I have to talk about poop. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, no, this is honestly, I don't know. This is something that allopathic medicine and alternative medicine have correctly. We need to be pooping daily. We need to be pooping regularly. Yeah. But it's not as simple as that because the process that I just told you about from liver to small intestine to large intestine to move that toxic bile out of your body Guess what? Guess what slows it down? Everything that we said at the beginning of this call, all of those toxins, they slow down that process and they can actually cause bile to go back to the liver and into the bloodstream, which is what creates symptoms ranging from hormonal imbalance, autoimmunity, joint pain, eczema, acne, psoriasis, fatigue, exhaustion, anxiety, all of it. It depends on where your weak link is in your body. So just to be clear about that, liver small intestine large intestine poop but often that's not functioning super well so it goes the opposite direction and back into the blood and this is coleostasis and this is what i work with people on because it is rampant now it's when the bile gets sluggish and doesn't move properly coleostasis that's coleostasis coleostasis yeah. so that's yeah. when the bile gets sluggish and goes yeah. back it's not a, it's not getting out in yeah. terms of skin, we say exfoliating, yeah. but that's not, it's not excreting yeah. it. It's coming yeah. back and recirculating Recir all of that bad. Yeah. It's all like literally that. sitting in a room of, with the doors closed with somebody who's smoking. You're just, it's just yeah. continually going back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. You're just swimming in your own S-H-I-T, you know, like really, <laughs> you genuinely are. And yeah, it, it's remarkable. So I mean, and what it will do is it will go for your weakest link in your body. So toxicity will show up as your weakest link in your body. Maybe that's your joints. Maybe that's insulin resistance. Maybe that's fatigue, acne, eczema, hair loss. It's not specific. Toxicity will go to your weakest link. Okay. And it will show up. So this is this is where, yeah, we have to be a little bit of a detective and watch ourselves or work with a practitioner to, to connect the symptoms. But just understand that toxicity circulating through the, through the body can show up as a myriad of symptoms. Which is interesting because we just did a live on hair loss, um, mm. which by the way, for you guys who are on here, 
that I had a problem posting that live. It didn't post to my main feed because I went over an hour. So I need you really to keep an eye on the clock, which we're fine. We yeah. But I went over an hour with that. That's why that live is posted in five different segments on hair loss. And that actually goes to what you were saying, Sheila. There's a myriad of different symptoms and different causes of hair yeah. loss. There's a myriad of different symptoms of being having a heavy toxic load, right? But yeah. I'm just going to interrupt you for one second. If you guys want to be in the drawing for these two detox teas by Timmy, uh, I always give, I always do a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these two d different detox teas, a colon cleanse, and um, this is a skinny tea, which I hate the name of, mm. but it does work. These do work to detox, and you do end up going poop more with with these two teas this is up for grabs for a giveaway you guys i'm going to mail them to you for free just hit that send button invite three people and then when this posts to the main feed which will be in one one video this time i promise um then you tag people so if you want to tag people for last week's giveaway which were the eye patches tag people and and comment on any of those five part series of videos that i did on hair loss okay because I'm going to pull the winner from any of those. And I'll announce, I'll announce that winner tomorrow. Don't leave now, but afterwards, go and tag your people. <laughs> okay. So what can, so it shows up. Wait, in Darnella, I, I just want to say something really quickly that I think your audience is going to be interested by. So recirculating toxicity. So if the liver is impaired, your thyroid is impaired. Yes. And we know our thyroid is really important for weight management as well as hair. Yes. As well as energy. So a liver being sluggish and being dysfunctional is going to affect your thyroid function. Something that we see a lot of in perimenopausal and menopausal women, their thyroid suddenly stops working. Yes. They're not digesting well, they're constipated, that whole picture. So toxicity can can actually also really have an impact on subsequent like other endocrine organs and also in relation to hormones because of the nature of your audience i want to say so imagine this like the liver is responsible for um, creating and metabolizing hormones and if it's overburdened with glyphosates and fluoride and metals it can't do anything about it it has no control to its toxic toxic exposure it just has to accept whatever you expose it to but what it can control is whether it's gonna produce testosterone or estrogen. And it's not going to upregulate more hormone production if it already has too much work. Are you following me? Uh -huh. so if, you're, if you have a sluggish liver that's super toxic, it's not going to have the capacity to go and create optimal estrogen and testosterone levels for you. You know, it's interesting that you say that because what I've found in, um, for some of you who know this and some of you don't, I've, I've completely given up alcohol. Um, and, uh, honestly, it's one of the, the smartest health decisions I made. I felt yeah. slightly hypocritical because I do love my cocktails and I do love my wine. But <laughs> as a health coach, I knew that's mm -hmm. not the path to optimal health. And mm -hmm. so I started about last October by barely, like just giving up, you know, a little bit, little bit, little bit. And as of January, nothing. And I'm taking a whole, at least a whole year off. I'm not even sure if I'll go back to it. But yeah. what I was going to say is in giving up the alcohol, and it's a combination of a lot of different things, but my hair is growing. Mm -hmm. I have hypothyroidism. I'm on a lesser dose mm -hmm. of thyroid medication. Mm -hmm. And my hormones seem more regulated. And that's yes. from giving up a toxin that we all know. Like it's very clear when we're making that choice to grab those cocktails, it's clear we're choosing to add toxins into our body. Yeah. Yeah. But there's all of those that are hidden with, you know, the heavy metals in foods yeah. and in supplements and the Teflon that we're using and the, the glyphosate on our non-organic mm -hmm. foods. So all of those stuff. But it's interesting when you, when you really kind of do take away one of the big ones, I can already tell as somebody who's curious and who yeah. likes to find out the science of the body, it's affected me in those three ways. My hair my hormones, which thyroid is a hormone as well. So my, my estrogen progesterone has been affected in a positive way. My thyroid, I need less, I need less medication and my hair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, of course, you know, it's a poison. There's no safe amount of alcohol really to drink for your liver. So, and I, I often say that if you want to lose weight, just stop drinking alcohol. It's really difficult for the liver. It's inflammatory, yeah. full of sugar. You know, they don't actually put the caloric count on the back.
up of anything alcohol. They're not required yeah. to do that because if someone saw that there was 2,000 calories on a 12 pack of beer, I think it might stop them from drinking that on a Saturday night. Okay. You know, that is a one hour intake for a day. So interestingly, and they don't also have to list anything else that's in the alcohol. So there's a little bit of a loophole there for them. But um, there's dyes, yeah. there's like a mega purple that's in red wine. Mm. There's dyes, there's chemicals in, in, in a lot of different stuff as well. Okay, so what, so now what do we do? <laughs> what would we do? <laughs> what do we do? Well, we limit our toxic exposure. Okay. We limit our toxic exposure and we focus on single ingredient nutritious food, yes? Shop on the outside of the grocery store, single ingredient nutritious food that you know the name of, that your grandmother knew the name of, and we chew extremely well. We ensure that we're pooping every single day, yes. But again, I mean, cholestasis, like that process of removing bile is really where it's at. That is what moves the needle, Darnell. That is what gets okay. the most toxins out of your system. Okay, so, so, to so yeah. let's just go, let's just go, um, can I marry you for a month? So, uh, absolutely adorable. Um, I am married though. But let's, let's go over the bile part of it one more yeah. time because you guys, you can detoxify in many different ways. You can sweat mm. things out, you can exercise things out, but the, but the liver is, mm. the liver is the main organ that does this. And it's pretty freaking amazing. Yeah. what the liver yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, we can't improve, we can't improve upon the liver. There's no fad diet or no supplement that's going to improve upon the liver. Okay. So to, to, to improve upon this system, yes, of getting bile out via your poop, what is absolutely necessary? Let's cover this. Okay. Yes. Soluble fiber. So soluble fiber is what's going to grab that bile in your large intestine and get it out via your poop. What are sources of soluble fiber? beans. I love beans. Okay. I soak beans in the fridge overnight. A lot of, well, many of my clients do as well. Always soak them because they have phytic acid around them and that makes them very difficult to digest, especially if you have gut issues. Is, okay. Is it the same very, with lentils? Yeah. Lentils, you need to soak, beans. Oh, I, I only soak lentils for probably an hour or so. Try to soak them overnight in the fridge so they don't ferment in filtered water. Yes. Okay. And that, that, that makes them more digestible. And then you're going to cook them on a low heat the following day. What I will say with soluble fiber. So other sources are apples peeled, potatoes peeled. Charcoal is also a very, very, very strong absorber of toxins, but it can constipate people. Is go slowly with soluble fiber because the bacteria in your gut, this is their food. And so if you're suddenly introducing a really new ingredient for them, they can get a little bit defiant and you can get bloating and gas and all sorts of things. So go very slow. Start like one teaspoon. Slow. Start very slow when you're introducing soluble fiber. But understand that that is a bile catcher. That's what's going to grab that bile and those toxins, and then you're going to poop it out. So you need to be having at least at least one bowel movement daily, folks. Anything under that is straight up constipation. Yeah, and if, if you are constipated, you have a, a really heavy toxic load. If you're con So you got to think about yeah. it that way. Constipation is not just about like, oh, I feel bloated. If you're not pooping this out, Mm -hmm. You're not pooping those toxins out. They're recirculating in your body. You're still grabbing that stuff from your large intestines where it's impact, where it's being impact. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It's kind of gross thing to talk about, but that's <laughs> the truth. It's okay. It's okay. But I, w okay. So yes, having a bowel movement daily, but having soluble fiber in your large intestine to actually grab those toxins. Yes. Okay. And minimizing your fats. This is the first time in my whole career as a naturopath, which spans about, 18 years where I've ever said low fat, you know, because know. fats are healthy. We need eggs, we need cream, we need butter, we need fish, all of that. Like I was on that bandwagon for ages. I told so many people, eat your fats, eat your fats, eat your fats. Yep. Okay. Because but they where, fill you up. Yeah. They, they, they fill, fill you up, but, but it's, it's the type of fats, right? So if you're doing olive oil mm. and, and salmon and things like that, those are healthy fats. Are you talking about those as well, not limiting those as well, correct? What I'm saying, Darnell, is that toxins are stored in the liver and they're stored in fat on humans and in animals. Okay, so if you're if you're consuming animal based fat, there's a good chance you're consuming toxins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've read that. I've read that too. That if you if you go to a restaurant 
and you don't, you know, it's not a grass fed beef or it's not a pasture raised yeah. chicken. The way that you can help in the most in terms of what that animal has been exposed to their toxins is cut the fat out of it. If you can yes. cut the gristle and the fat around a steak, a lot of those toxins are like, like Sheila said, they're, they're held not only in our fats, in fat. but in the yeah. fats of the animals. So t cut that part away. Yeah, take the chicken skin off, choose lean meat. And also the leaner the meat, the more zinc there is going to be in that in that piece of meat. And that's fantastic for the skin, fantastic for detoxification, for everything, yes? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so, right. yeah, so again, it's moderating your fats, understanding that they're going to be delivering a lot of toxins. They're gonna to be delivering also, I mean, eggs, butter, milk, and cream, they deliver a lot of vitamin A. And a lot of us are stockpiling vitamin A in our liver. Anyone that's been on a little bit of a liver kick in the past, you know, taking liver capsules, eat liver regularly, or if you've taken Roaccutane in your teenage years, your liver is responsible for storing fat soluble vitamins, notably A and D, not so much E and K, more so A and D, okay? So I actually suggest to people to moderate their fats, slowly increase your soluble fiber, but above all, ensure that you're having good bowel movements to get that bile out, okay? There's a lot of, there's many more complexities to it. Yes, like for people with SIBO or different sorts of dysbiosis that I have to work through with them. But what you can actually do today is incorporate more soluble fiber slowly, moderate your animal fat, choose yeah. lean meats, yeah? Yeah, and cook sparingly with as little oil as you need. You know, just moderate your fats. There's enough fat in ground meat or in a, in, you know, a piece of steak. You don't need to actually add extra fat on top of that. Right. Mm. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I, I would say in terms of animal fat, mine is almost zero unless it's like salmon. Cause I don't, I'm not eating yeah. a ton of fat. Um, and I'm, and I'm, and I microdose my meat. So I'm not like a big meat eater. I'm predominantly yeah. plant-based nice. and I microdose my meat when it comes to like really lean kind of cuts, but I haven't I love heard that one. Meat. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I've never heard microdose my meat. I love it. <laughs> I haven't heard it either, but that's what I do. I feel like I microdose my meat. Like yeah. I'll, I, I cook for my family and I'll have what would normally be like a palm sized uh, portion mm -hmm. of meat. I don't eat meat every day, but would normally be this. I'm probably having this. I'm probably mm -hmm. having like a walnut sized portion mm -hmm. of meat and then the rest are all organic vegetables, but healthy oils. I'm, I'm big on olive oil. So yeah. now I'm kind of, like, I think I, I wonder if you're talking more about the animal based oils or, you know, oils that, that could potentially be toxic, toxin, uh, toxic, but is olive oil, if you're doing an organic olive oil, are you still suggesting to limit that? I think I'm suggesting to use as little fat as you need okay. in general. I think what you're getting to is seed oils. Everyone's talking about seed oils and their inflammatory nature, but right. the easiest way to avoid seed oils is just to moderate your fat. Moderate. Choose lean meats and cook with as little as minimal oil as you can. And for satiety, because we want to be full, we want balanced blood sugar levels, eat protein. Eat really good quality animal protein, you know, if that works for you. If you tend to be more of a veg head, like eat vegetarian based protein, but eat protein for satiety and blood sugar balance versus fat because it's your liver that has to metabolize fat and that makes bile flow more sluggish. Okay. Reality, I'm going yeah. to interrupt you for just a second because I did do a live mm -hmm. on our high protein fat diet. Mm -hmm. Now what Sheila is talking about is real foods getting protein. Okay. We're not talking about protein bars. We're not talking about protein powders. We're not talking about protein enriched things. We're talking mm -hmm. about small amounts of, of lean, animal protein, as well as protein that you can find in beans and lentils and those kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, lean beef, lean chicken, white, fresh, small fish, lentilles and beans, exactly, yes, so you Somebody like, said, what about <laughs> avocados? They're high in fat, but they also have a lot of fiber. That was a question that came in. What about avocados? What's your take on avocados? They're high in monounsaturated fats. There's better sources of fiber. There's better sources of fiber, you know, so, for me, an avocado is, um, it's a pleasure, you know, to enjoy sparingly, um, but not regularly as a source of fiber. You're better to go for peeled apples, for lentilles, 
um, yeah, you're better to what, move towards that, towards soluble what is fiber. The, what is the purpose of a peeled apple? Because isn't the skin, if it's organic, isn't the skin giving you ex, extra fiber that you need? No, it's not. And this is a whole nother, we need to do a whole nother podcast on this one as to why we need to peel our fruits and vegetables. Um, but it is best because the polyphenol content to peel our fruits and vegetables. Because there's something in polyphenols that slows down our primary detoxification pathway in our liver. Yes. So peeling your fruits and vegetables is the best bet. And it's also going to remove a lot of, a lot of top whatever is on that skin on the outside, even an organic fruit. It's a good rule to peel your fruit and peel your vegetables. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've but to be honest, I've that, that, that is an entirely different conversation. Yes. That I'm really happy to, to get back to another time because it's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes. We, we will have to have you back on. Okay. So, so basically what we're doing is let's just recap in terms of like, what do we do now that we're full of toxins and mm -hmm. what do you, so let's go over that first again, just recap. And then I want to get into like, what do you think about fasting about some of these detox fasts that people are going mm -hmm. through? Yeah. Yes. I mean, so to recap, it's like the body has inbuilt detoxification systems. Yes. So we have the primary one being at the liver and then secondary is kidneys. So obviously hydration is an important thing. This is something I actually love talking to people about hydration. Okay. So we don't all need the same amount of water. A 95 pound woman is not going to be the need the same amount of water daily as a 200 pound man. Yeah. So the easiest way to judge this is to look at your urine. It shouldn't be at either extreme. You don't want it entirely transparent because then you're going to be peeing out your minerals. Yes. And you obviously don't want to be dehydrated with really yellow pee. Mm. We want it right in the middle. So hydration is really important. If you want to, to feel great and to heal symptoms, you have to nail the hydration piece. So watch your pee yeah. daily. And I, that brings up another thing. Okay. So I love this analogy that if you're going to be buying a brand new house, do you really need cleaning products? Not that much, you know, just to clean up a few little things. But if you're buying an old, ancient house, do you need cleaning products? Absolutely, yes, you do. And this applies to liver health. If you plan on detoxifying a liver that has been exposed to toxins throughout its lifetime in many various forms, you need cleaning products in the form of minerals, folks. Okay, so minerals are what support that upregulation of energy that's necessary to detoxify because it's a big demand on the body. Yes, it's not, it is something that we do on a daily basis, but we need extra minerals to really, yes, there we go, phase one and phase two detoxification. Yes. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, I'll, just, I'll be yeah. behind here. Yeah, okay. so B vitamins, notably, but minerals are a big hitter when it comes to detoxification. And specifically, we're looking at magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So I encourage clients, do not be scared of salt. Salt your food. Find a very white, refined salt and salt your food. Sodium stabilizes your system and you need it for detoxification. There's a lot of so, people with pots that actually have to specifically add yeah. salt to their diet because their systems like is so out of whack. Yeah. I mean, um, I think for them, it's particularly around blood pressure, but all of us need sodium. I mean, our adrenal glands that secrete our stress response on a daily basis, they demand sodium, but we need sodium. You know, we live in a society that scares us of the sun and sodium and everything. And we need salt, you know, so we need magnesium, potassium, and sodium if we're planning on really getting deep into detoxification and soluble fiber that i spoke a lot about it's a medicine like it's a food but it's a medicine so it's something to really move slowly with you know and be conscious that it's going to alter your microbiome so yeah. if you have a week or two with altered digestive sy symptoms back off a little bit doesn't mean to stop it just means back off a little bit and wait for your microbiome to adapt to this new food that you're feeding it and, and the symptoms of your microbiome kind of being out of whack is really mm. that bloating kind of feeling, right? Yeah, it's different for everyone. It could be diarrhea, constipation, bloating, reflux, whatever it is. But you don't, I mean, we're not, the, the, guilt, the goal of detox is not to feel bad. You know, mm. we're trying to find that Goldilocks point where you do just enough that you feel good, but yeah. you're also actively detoxing. Because yeah. if if it's well I have, I have two questions well one is a statement but it because if you're holding the toxins in your fat mm -hmm. and you're detoxing or you're losing weight you're like really 
that's being released from your fat into your system, which yeah. could make you feel bad. Yeah. Weight, right? lo weight loss is really a time that you need to make sure you're detoxifying. Okay. So now I have a couple questions coming in. The first question yeah. I have, cause I'm, I'm scrolling through you guys mm -hmm. to see your questions so that Sheila can just like keep going and answer. Um, the salt intake, what if you have high blood pressure? Because that is known to like increase blood pressure. So what is your thought on that? No, don't increase your salt if you have high don't blood pressure. Increase your salt if you have high blood pressure, you guys. Okay, yeah. and then- And somebody... don't increase your salt to the point that you give yourself high blood pressure, okay? So let's be reasonable here, folks. Yes, I'm talking about sprinkling some salt on your food, not taking in teaspoons of it or adding it to your water all the time. That's not necessary. There's sodium in food. But don't be scared of salt. You can not salt your food. It's a mineral that we need. And it tastes good. It, um, yeah, it, tastes good. <laughs> it makes everything good. It tastes better. Um, yeah. Okay, so then somebody asked if I'm going to save this live. I'm going to save this live. Um, I really appreciate if you can save this live. So many useful information. It's going to be saved to my feed right afterwards. So you guys can come back and kind of um, learn about this. It's all, somebody also said, what are your thoughts on fiber supplements? Because... I am a big fiber supplement person when mm -hmm. I like when, especially when I travel, I eat a lot of soluble fiber in my mm -hmm. diet. But if I'm traveling and I'm like, I know that my, my normal stuff that I, that I eat yeah. is going to be different because of travel. I always travel with fiber um, supplements because I know that I'm probably not going to be getting the same food that I have that is very fiber rich. Yeah. What are your, what's your, I, mean, what's I would your say it depends that? on what it, it would, it depends on what it is. Like if it's psyllium husks, yes, absolutely. You know, psyllium husks mm -hmm. are a great soluble fiber that work really well for some people, but it depends on what additives and flavorings yeah. and things yeah. there are in it, you know? So if it's a really yeah. pure fiber source, absolutely. As close to food as possible, you, like as close to, as close yes. to whole food possible you know but there's nothing wrong with traveling with a little bag of psyllium and just putting it through some water and downing that you know it's, yeah it's it'll keep your soluble fiber intake up but yeah i mean it's a good point when you're traveling you really need to prioritize keeping the balls moving and staying hydrated and you guys in the in the supplement market especially in the u.s it's very very loosely regulated by the fda yes. There's really no standards in terms of like, you, you can put stuff out there and until you get caught, you can still sell it to the public. If, if, you, if they test something and it's, it's full of mercury or it's full of toxins, full of lead or whatever, they'll pull it from the shelf, but it, it can oftentimes take years. So you need to be very careful on where you're getting any sort of supplements. And I'm doing a live on that, I think in the next two weeks on the dangers of supplements that are oftentimes filled with toxins and fillers and not even bioavailable. So it's always yeah. best to get everything you need from real food. And that's usually single yeah. ingredient foods. Yeah, that's single ingredient foods. But I will say Darnell, what absolutely excites me about detoxification, particularly supporting bile flow, is that people need less supplements. Because often supplements are just propping up systems, to be honest with you. Yeah. And they might give you temporary relief, but it's not root cause care. Once you start truly getting toxins out of your body, you have such less need for adaptogens and amino acids and B vitamins still have their place, but really it dwindles down to minerals and soluble fiber because your body has so much intelligence in it, you know, and I am a health junkie, you know, like I have done everything, tried everything. I have every machine and I love it. But the freedom that you get in detoxification within your body, you just, you need less, basically you need less. Well, just like I need less hormone, I need less uh, thyroid medication right now. Yeah, I need precisely. less. I need less bioidentical hormones. Um, you guys have yeah. seen my live on hormones. Yeah. I'm needing less of that. Be, and for Your me, liver is producing my liver, T3 liver is also producing, producing estrogen. Yeah, yeah, it's producing everything go. that it needs. I mean, I'm listen. I'm 55. I still need hormone replacement therapy. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. Folks. I'm still on that. But I've noticed that my thyroid. Um, I've I've pretty much cut my thyroid um, medication in half. That's the only real medication that I'm mm. on besides, yeah. uh, and that's a genetic thing. It's in everybody yes. in my family. But I've cut it in half from just mm. taking alcohol away because that's mm. a known toxin. So if you're if you're taking care of your whole system to mm -hmm. the point where your toxic load has lessened, 
then all of that becomes, you, you need just so much less, so much less new, um, in terms of like supplements, so much less in terms of any medications and stuff like that. Somebody said, I think Himalayan salt is healthier than table salt. Maybe we need an Instagram live about vitamin supplements, sugar, and salt. Totally going to do that. Um, what is your take on Himalayan on salt? Can I, yeah, I would love to comment quickly on that because there's a lot of marketing there. So Himalayan salt is unrefined and they love to market it as 92 minerals or 72 minerals, something like that, okay? There's about 26 minerals that are actually good for our health and there's about 50 that are toxic. And this is why I suggest we go for refined single ingredient white salt that only has sodium in it because those 91 other minerals, the likelihood is that two thirds of them are toxic. And there was more, I remember reading research on that there's more um, bromium, excuse me, which is something that's toxic for the thyroid, in unrefined salt. Like the numbers were astronomical. So you're best to go with refined white sea salt to prevent your exposure to toxic minerals if it's unrefined. Because what's in the ocean, you know, they, they, salt gets made in the ocean and the ocean has a hell of a lot of toxicity in it right now. So yeah. Choose Somebody asked, white. isn't white salt bleached? No. no, 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 no. Salt is normally white when it's all, when it's mm. complete, when you strip everything away from yes. it, it's, yeah. it's white, the color's the white. Gray, exactly, the gray is toxins, the gray is toxic yeah. minerals. I mean, this is, yeah, this is an interesting question, but no, it's white refined sea salt is pure sodium when there's no other toxins in it. The gray is toxins. And what do you think about the iodized salts? You know, sometimes they'll have, I don't know, let me see if I can grab one, but sometimes they'll have like a white refined salt and it'll be iodized. Mm, I, I can't answer on that, but no, I mean, iodine is a mineral that is therapeutic in small amounts, but there's yeah. been big health crazes with potassium iodide that have damaged a lot of people's thyroid. So iodized salt, no, I'm not, I, can't, I don't okay. have enough to answer on. Plain, refined, white, single ingredient salt. Yes. Love but don't forget magnesium and potassium, like I said, topical magnesium and oral potassium, your three main electrolytes that you absolutely need for detoxification. Yeah. So mm. if you were to give us, if you were to say three main things, now I'm looking at, I, I pulled this up, which yes. is liver cleansing foods, mm. okay? Um, mm. Now, of course, I, I think it's missing cruciferous vegetables. Aren't cruciferous mm. vegetables like broccoli part of the whole cleaning of the liver situation, or am I wrong? I mean, cru cruciferous vegetables have compounds in them that affect your endocrine glands, including your thyroid, that slow it down a lot. Mm. So, no, I don't lean into, you know, I have a philosophy of, stop intoxing yourself to allow your body to properly detox, which is where we eliminate the vitamin A containing foods, the high fat content. We limit our exposure to, to, to pesticides and toxins so that our liver can actually just do its work. Yeah. You know, so that it can, it can go about its process. Yes, we absolutely need fiber. We need insoluble and soluble fiber. But if you lessen the toxins coming in, your body's able to do its job. And and the way to lessen those toxins is your, I mean, you have to shop organic. Shop so organic. Yeah. Drink filtered water. Lower your fat intake. Really lower your fat intake for a lot of people. So that means like lowering your egg intake, your butter intake, your cream intake, fatty meats, bring it right down, go right to lean. Yes. Eat absolutely single ingredient whole I foods talk, you know that's that just, that that's a given like yes, food that's a given food you know when you look at this it's yeah. it's food it's one yeah. thing it's food one thing sh food should not come in a box or a bag unless it's like mm -hmm. a bag of carrots mm -hmm. you know a bag of, yeah it doesn't yeah it's not supposed to have more than one ingredient yeah and so I will bring it back to, I mean, the pooping every day is fundamental. If anything ever stops you from going to the toilet, pause. Yes, because going to the toilet is mandatory every day. Yes. Mm. So if you're going to the toilet every day, you can slowly start to introduce soluble fiber in the form of a teaspoon of beans at each meal, just to be sure that there's something in your large intestine there ready to grab that bile and get it out by your feces. Yes. Yeah. And if you're a really good pooper, 
you can add <laughs> you can add charcoal before you go to sleep because charcoal is one of the oldest remedies that there is out there like it's been used in biblical times and it grabs like it's porous um quality it can grab so many toxins so taking so what are you what are you sleep. taking like what what would you suggest in terms of charcoal supplement for 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 people if they wanted to add that in addition to taking all the toxins out of your yeah. diet and your environment to add in the soluble fiber to add in the water to add in the charcoal how does that look like when you add in charcoal charcoal is something that can only be added if you're having regular bowel movements because it can have a tendency to constipate people and that is absolutely something we cannot negotiate on okay so if you are a fantastic pooper add one charcoal before you go to sleep at night also, if you happen to be waking around 4.30 each day, it's likely a bile dump. That's a really common time that the liver will dump bile. And taking a charcoal before you go to sleep will often mop, mop up those toxins and help you sleep through that time. Wait a second. Yeah. Rewind. Wait, 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 wait. Because sleep is so important, yeah. you guys, to health, yeah. to everything. Yeah. Sleep affects how much you weigh. It, it affects your mood, anxiety, depression. There's so yeah. many things, yeah. metabolic health, that are tied to sleep. And 4.30, that's an interesting thing that you said, like if you're waking up before the sun gets up, yeah. you're waking yeah, up I mean, before the sun gets up. Mm. In, China, in traditional Chinese medicine, it's between three and five o'clock is liver time, yes? And most people have a bile dump, so your liver will naturally drop bile into the small intestine around 4.30. Now this can be caused if you're eating too late at night, it can be caused if you're quite toxic. And it will wake you up, yes? So if you have charcoal before you go to sleep, it's going to grab some of those toxins and hopefully allow you to sleep through that bile dump. Does that make sense? Interesting. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said, can charcoal be used for CDIF infection? What is a CDIF? I wish I knew what that meant. <laughs> I'd have to, you know what? I'd have to look that up. Stacy. I got that yeah. question. I'm going to write it down. DM mm. me. Let me do a little research on that CDIF infection. CDIF. And then somebody also asked, I'm just going to go back over this for just a second, Sheila, because there were some questions sure. that came in that were moving a little fast. So let me see. Um, should I get blood work to check estrogen levels um, being postmenopausal? That was on another live. Absolutely. You should always get, you know, make sure that you're getting your blood work done for sure. And I think estrogen levels and, and hormonal levels should be checked in multiple stages of your life starting at about when you when you're first uh hit your period you know from between 9 and 15 when you're in your 20s when you're in your 30s 40s as your or your hormones fluctuate through your whole life so making sure that you've got a baseline and where you are now to see if there's something that be that could be done i'm having dr taylor back on i don't have the date yet to talk about hormonal health but remember that the, your toxic load affects your hormonal health Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people reverse endometriosis, PCOS, extreme PMDD, just by sorting out their bile flow. Because your bile flow is responsible for excreting old estrogens. And going back to the fact that your liver is not going to be producing estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, or testosterone if it's burdened. You know, like men's testosterone numbers have gone up into the 900s from clearing vitamin A from their liver. So it is really, really critical. Your liver is what creates hormones as well as binds and excretes them. So I have a and question. I want to point this out that, you know, by the time, like at 50 years old, we've had 50 years to accumulate toxins, yeah. which is why poliostasis is more common, 40, 50, and more common in women. Because right. we have higher hormone levels and what's responsible for metabolizing our hormones, our liver. So actually as women, perimenopausal and menopausal, we have a higher, higher risk of coleostasis and a, a stronger reason to get ahead of it and to be totally. proactive. Totally. Yeah. Somebody asked, what are your thoughts on bone broth slow cooked for collagen? What are your thoughts on that? I can tell you what my thoughts are. Um, but okay. what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, it depends. Mm. It really depends because where's that animal coming from? Exactly. Um, the lead content is the, often the whole, through the roof. Hormonal content. There's just a mm. lot of stuff going on in animals. It's, you know, our animals today are not the animals that our, our grandparents had mm. were, were that were sustaining our grandparents. So you really have to look at how is that animal raised? 
Where's that bone broth coming from? What parts are being used? Is it organic? Um, <laughs> there's a lot, an organic, the organic stamp on these kind of stuff. It, it's a broad, it's a broad blanket that covers a lot of stuff. So a, organic stamp on a bone broth is you know that it's a humanely treated animal and it hasn't had um it has not had any antibiotics for its entire life if it, it at any point got sick during its entire life it can no longer be certified as organic so mm -hmm. that's why when you're looking at stuff in terms of your the food that you're eating i always 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 will aim for organic because not only are you looking at heavy metals and everything else that that animal ate but it's, it's, you know, you've got all of that, the pesticides and herbicides and all of that stuff that, I mean, if you're, if you're, they're using herbicides and on the grass that the animal's eating, it's being taken up into the flesh. And then if those bones are being um, burned, you know, I mean, boiled for, for collagen, you're consuming all of that. So you have to just really, you want to know where your food is coming from. And that's when you get back to the easiest way is single ingredient foods that are organic. Yeah, of course. Okay, let and I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure there's farmer markets there, but no, I'm of the same mind as you. There's a lot of research indicating high lead content in bone broth, and I do a lot of hair and mineral analysis with clients, and I see a lot of lead. So, no, I don't advise bone broth at this time. Um, a lot of people are asking, where do you get your charcoal from? Um, you guys, I'm going to do a little bit of research in terms of what are like the best uh, charcoal supplements that we could get over here and so just give me a little bit of time with that just know that this is this is an opening conversation because yeah. when we're talking about toxicity this is not an hour-long conversation we're talking about our health and you and you're talking about how long you're going to be on the planet and how many of these related symptoms and just disorders and diseases are going to start coming up from our toxic load that we're having. This is going to be, more, this is a, going to be an ongoing conversation. Yeah. So hopefully we can have but you back. Darnell, I will say that a lot of charcoal out there is wood-based charcoal. I love to use bamboo-based charcoal. Okay. Not coconut, not wood, but there's bamboo-based charcoal. Okay. Bamboo no or wood more so than coconuts. But I mean, charcoal is charcoal, yeah. like get organic charcoal, you know, but like, it's pretty simple. You don't need to spend a lot of money on it. And it has, cause there's a lot of binders, you know, a lot of people use various binders for mold and for toxic exposure, right. but charcoal time and time again in research has like the same porous qualities to be able to absorb a huge amount of toxins. So taking one at nighttime, but being sure it does not constipate you will support grabbing that bile in your large intestine, you know, but I feel the need there now just to reiterate the process because I don't want people just jumping in and yes. taking charcoal. That's not the objective. Yes. 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 Okay. We've got, we have five minutes. So let's do like a, a, re a recap. Yes. Yeah. A recap. So wait, if you want to, wait, wait sorry, bile, sorry. One no, second, yeah. Sheila, one second. If you guys want to be in the drawing for these two products, um, make sure you invite your three people when I post this to the feed, tag three more people and, you know, just comment, comment, comment. It increases your chances. And if you want to tag three people on the hair loss um, five part series that is posted on my feed, that winner will be announced tomorrow when I do a microneedling on my whole stomach. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about my skincare <laughs> protocol. We'll talk about my microneedling protocol. That's all coming up tomorrow when I microneedle into my abdomen. Okay, you're okay. up, Sheila. Let's get a recap. Okay, so generally I have a rule of patience, not protocols, because we're all bio-individual. Yep. But there's a few things you can do today to support your bio flow, okay? okay? Lower, lower your overall fat intake and increase your protein, your lean protein intake. Number one, for satiety, yes, okay? Then slowly increase your soluble fiber, very slowly, okay? If you have gut reactions, back off a little bit and just give it time to see if it settles, yes? You're feeding those microbes, okay? All the while keeping up insoluble fiber, keeping up certain grains if that's part of your diet, yes? Um, so, and hydration, dial in your hydration, watch your urination every day and be sure that it's not extremely yellow and it's certainly not transparent, okay? Yep. Bring in those things, salting your food, yes. 
keep your bowels moving. Aim for two bowel movements daily. I see clients heal from so many different things if they can get to two bowel movements daily versus one, because that's that bile. It's that bile getting out of your body. That is, that's what moves the needle. That is our best bet to detoxify. Yeah. Okay. You're keeping your bowel movements going. Yes. And, and for thought, me, for yeah. me, that's like water, soluble fire, fiber, predominantly plant-based. Those three things for me, mm -hmm. I'm drinking at least half of my weight in ounces in water a day, at least. Mm -hmm. I'm adding in that soluble fiber that is a, that's whole foods, predominantly plant-based. Um, and so, and, and when I'm traveling, I'm adding a, a fiber pill. So now I'm going to try the charcoal thing. Yeah, try charcoal and minerals, especially if you're drinking half your water, half your weight in water, like be careful not to be urinating out all of your electrolytes and your minerals, yeah. because we're, you know, we live in this culture of walk around with a water bottle, but we, we can overhydrate very easily. Yeah. Yes. So there's that one. So, I mean, those are just things that you can start doing yourself to slowly, because clearing your liver takes a while. Okay, it's not something that can be done overnight, but you just want to slowly clear that toxicity and you're going to start to see it in your skin, in your energy, in your hormones, in your digestion, in whatever ailment you have. As yeah. you lessen your toxic load, you're going to start it, to feel better. It's really quite fascinating how that, how being taught, how having a heavier toxic load affects so many things. Yeah. And it yeah. does show up in our largest organ, which is our skin. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're gonna wrap up here. Yeah. Sheila, thank you so much. So this is Sheila Keneally. You can find her at Holistic Health by Sheila. Thank you so much. And I'm going to get a list. I, if you could kindly just share with me what charcoal you take, because I yeah. want to see what that is and I'll share it with everybody else. And then you guys, when I post this to my main feed, make sure that you're, you're commenting away and you're tagging people. You'll be in the drawing for this, these two different products from Teamy, a colon cleanse and a skinny tea, which I hate the name of, but these are detox teas as well. And so I'll see you guys tomorrow where I microneedle my whole stomach. Would you microneedle stomach, please, to start from the beginning. Um, 11 a.m. If you guys have your microneedling tool, meet me at 11 a.m. on this live. I'm going to microneedle my abdomen which is going to be a ton of fun. <laughs> I love it. Guys Thank you, Sheila. Thank Have a you. great rest of your day. Thank okay, you. Bye, everybody. Bye.